a pair of AL clubs. It's the Toronto Blue Jays against the Chicago White Sox. Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. The White Sox call this one home, U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago. A look at Carlos Quentin, no doubt, getting ready for some offensive punch. Happy to be with you, our broadcast of 2K Sports Major League Baseball. We're going to see Mark Burley make the start in today's game. Steve, he's facing that Toronto lineup today. What is he thinking about? Well, it's South Paul on the mound today, and this one is going to have to be on top of his game. And when he's on, he's usually pretty darn good. But this is a quality lineup he's facing, which means... He's going to have to really execute his pitches to get out of jams. Brought to you by Pepsi, here's the Blue Jays lineup. So who are you looking at, John? Well, to me, Lyle Overbay is a guy that has to pick up his run production if he wants to be an established Major League Baseball player. He gets a chance to have a lot of it back throughout his career, but the run production doesn't fit the size and the swing of this guy. Leading, Leading it off is Vernon Tom Wells. Now the Blue Jays losing their last game. Makes it five in a row now they've lost. They're looking to get this turned around. And every team knows that even at this point in the season, you have to get every win you can. Oh! Nice reflexes there to keep that one under control. That one was in the dirt. So the last thing you want is to fall out of it early. They haven't. Well, no, they haven't. But, you know, even in May, they say that the games aren't that important. Well, they are. And these teams are feeling the pressure in May. The 1-1 hit sharply towards the hole. Now a quick look for this game of the White Sox and how they are positioned in the field. Thought Steve, anybody stand out? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. And Burley gets it by, called strike, and the count will go to 0-1. He wanted to go down and away with that slider, but he left it up and away, had just enough movement on it to get the strike. Strike, strike two. two. Travis Snyder now down on the count. Uh, Got to be feeling good today. Picked up a couple hits in the game last night. This one swung on line towards the middle. One away. Here's the May schedule for the White Sox. They wrap up the series with Toronto today. They'll get on the road tomorrow, and they'll have to contend with Denard Span and a very good lineup for the Minnesota Twins. That's a team they handled all right the last time up. They'll try for a repeat performance. That'll be Tuesday and Wednesday. After that, they kick off a series with the Kansas City Royals, a little division rivalry. Team they beat in the previous series between the two. And that's quite a few road games coming up, and that's always challenging. And Lynn's batting. Well, Mark Burley again established himself as the ace of the Chicago White Sox staff. You talk about a guy who doesn't throw hard, but he keeps the ball in play. He makes his fielders work behind him, and that's why everyone loves playing with him. And with two strikes on him, Adam Lind will protect the strike zone right here. And for Mark Burley, he has turned into a real horse. This is a guy not only pitches well, and often, but Ball. deep into games. Well, he sure does. He's a godsend to the bullpen because every time he goes out there, you know he's going to give you seven, eight, possibly even nine innings every start. And he'll try to make the play. That's the second out of the inning. I've got a moment to see how the Blue Jays are doing this year rate-wise in the American League. First in triples, second batting average with runners in scoring position, and they're the number two team in hits this is a lineup that gets men on base by putting the ball in play and making contact. Looked like the cutter that time for a called strike. And you can throw the ball down in the zone with that kind of movement. It can be very effective. This one's grounded to second. Back up. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. They pick up no runs on one hit. And Dustin McGowan is the pitcher. He's starting for to run. As he gets into this White Sox lineup, Steve, a little strategy. A pretty even matchup right here. Quality right-hander against a quality lineup. And oftentimes we say good pitching beats good hitting. We'll see if that prevails in this one. First pitch on the way to Dame. Back up the middle. Good baseball and a good job. Let's take a look. Number you know, we talk about team in baseball, and that's where you see it a lot of times on defense. 
And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and run scored, top five. That one's drilled to short. Now it's two away. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzy Guillen's got going. Scouting report, John. How about some picks? Well, the potential's there for Alex Rios to be a productive hitter. So let's see if he can provide some offense for his team today because they're going to need it. And here's Paul Canerco. He's the league leader in ribbies. Swings on that first pitch, misses the fastball, 0 and 1. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out, and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Yeah, with two down, he's got a man on board. Number 20, Carlos Winton. Well, with that big two out hit right there in this inning, you know the manager's in there telling him, let's not let him breathe. Let's not let him get that third out. Let's score before this inning's over. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now, leading the MLB in batting average. And the uh, first pitch was a strike. Got about 0 1 right now. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season here, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. So well, here's how Toronto will stack up defensively. Any scouting pick, Steve? Number 15. Well, John McDonald Jordan. is so flashy defensively, he can make any play out there, and he does it with pizzazz. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. 0 and 1. McGowan delivering a strike that puts him in charge 0 and 2. Well, right there, you can just tell that the hitter was absolutely fooled on that pitch. Nothing you can do. You try to reach out and just put it in play, but he swung through it. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. Still scoreless in Chicago. For the second Clear skies the and U.S. Sailor Field on the menu for this afternoon. Number Glad to have you with us. Edwin Encarnacion. And it's Edwin Encarnacion at the plate. Playing his sixth year at the Majors. It's taken for a ball. Bottom dropping out on that burly pitch. Well, that's the pitch you want for the ground ball out. That two-seam fastball at the bottom of the strike zone. Just couldn't quite catch the plate. Good eye by the hitter. And one swung on and missed by Encarnacion. Strike evens it up. Now coming off a good ball game last night. Picking up two hits in that one. 1-1 one, one pitch. Up the middle. Back up. So Encarnacion is set down. Here are the standings in the Eastern Division brought to you by State Farm. Still plenty of games to be played. In first place, it's the Yankees. The Orioles, second place. In third, the Red Sox. Fourth place, the Blue Jays. And it's the Rays in the last slot. And Ruiz settles in. Well, back in July of last year, Mark Burley threw that perfect game for the Chicago White Sox. And I tell you what, kids, if you're watching a guy and you can't throw 95-96, take a good look at Mark Burley. He'll teach you how to pitch. Rios will field as he gets to it for the L. For Mark Burley, if any pitcher deserved to have a no-hitter, you gotta you got to give it to him because he pitches games, John. Well, he absolutely does, and the great thing about Mark Burley is he works so quickly that your defense is ready to go on every pitch. There's no lull in the game when he's out there. That one's going to be outside. Ball one. Here's the 1-0 from Burley. That's outside. Ball two. Here's the delivery. Hit hard on the ground to short. And Ramirez fields the ball. Throws to first in time. That's three down. And Alex Rios to lead off. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. Alex Rios. Swung on line to right center field. Into the alleyway. He'll likely get extra bases on this. Look at the leaders in extra base hits, courtesy of State Farm. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense is somebody they've really come to rely upon. Cast to drive and a run, A.J. Pierzynski. One of the best batting averages in the league. 
Base runner at second with nobody out. Hot shot towards the hole. And he continues that streak as that one goes through. This is what the schedule looks like for Toronto. They wrap up the Chicago series today. And it's a road trip to take on the Red Sox and their outfielder, J.D. Drew. That series bound to be competitive. It'll be a three-game series. And after that, they'll be home against the Rangers. They'll have to deal with Josh Hamilton in that power-hitting lineup. Good chance there to make up for the losses in the previous series between the two. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate. Day in and day out, that consistency is critical to their success. The pitch hit in the air to left center. It falls in there, and Rios will score. And here's Pazinski heading home. And the second run comes in. And the White Sox, they just keep rolling. Number 30, Mark Dunce. Well, I like the fact that he stayed calm in this situation. He stayed back, and he drove that ball with a lot of confidence in that swing. Made sure he could get into second safely, but more importantly, they now lead two to nothing with those RBIs. One away. The teams who have been reaching home the most over the past 10, courtesy of State Farm, the White Sox, number one, the Indians, second. In the third spot, the Orioles, the Twins, fourth, and for the Tigers, fifth. And it's Johnny Damon. First pitch on the way to Damon. Takes a swing, but he's too late on that one. Strike one. You know, take a look at Johnny Damon's approach at the plate. He's a slasher in there. He's a guy that goes up looking to swing the bat to put the ball in play, but has enough patience to take the walk if the pitcher gives it to him. That's a great situation for some offense. Certainly Johnny Damon in 09 like the new Yankee Stadium and that wonderful wind tunnel to right center. Well, Johnny Damon's, you know, has, has a swing that's tailor-made for short porch and right field, and he took full advantage with the 24 homers. But the fact that he played in Boston and he's successful in New York tells you that this guy can play anywhere. Well, he's a veteran hitter and a guy. Ground ball to Overbay. The second for one. And that's two. A double play. And so the scoring came in the second. Second inning sees the first two runs of our ball game. The White Sox have the lead. Two to nothing. There's a familiar the face, Isaac Gian Guillen looking up. He got what he needed Jones, out of his lineup that last time through. This lead now something he can try to protect if he can get some solid pitching. Headed for the middle. Back up. That's one away. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners, this lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient, they let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. Uh, and he can't catch up with that one, 0 1. Always good coming off a three hit game the night before, and gives you some confidence coming into today's game. Slider misses. One ball, one strike. Now Przinsky sets up. Swing and a rocket towards short. And then he'll set down Chavez. Don't talk about settling in. How about retiring eight hitters in a row? I think he settled in. Two outs and nobody on. And Wells settles in, first pitch. Oh. That curve is just a little bit outside. One ball, no strikes. The 1-0 now. Strike in one. there at the letters, evening the count at 1-1. One one. Sometimes when the pitch comes out of the pitcher's hand, you have to say to yourself, I'm going to lay off and wait for the next one. He didn't think you could catch up to it. Good to Up the middle. And the throw. Oh. And that's in plenty of time for the out. 
So Mike Burley gets him one, two, three. And Paul Kodarko to lead it off. 14th year in the majors. Number 14, Paul Kodarko. And he starts Kodarko out. Hit hard to second. One away. Now a chance to check out the league hit leaders brought to you by State Farm. Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. He's number one in runs scored in the league. Swung on and missed. 0 1. McGowan sends the 0 1. A swing and a foul off to the right side. Slider swung out and missed. Two down. That's a great strikeout right there, Gary. Three pitches and he sits him down. How about that for efficiency? And Beckham's in the box. First pitch on the way. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect on one. A fastball up and away. It's awfully tough to catch up with it because you want to try to hit it deeper in the zone and go the other way. And before you know it, it's by you. McGowan with the pitch. Swung on, liner to right. And that one's put away to retire the side. And nothing across here in this half of the inning. And we've got Snyder batting. Last time up, flew out. Number 45, Travis Snyder. And here's the first one. Swung and a ground ball to third. One away. Let's have a look at the current state of the race with the State Farm standings board in the Central Division. It's the White Sox in first, Twins in the second spot, third, the Royals. In the fourth spot, it's the Indians. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody, sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level. And Lynn's batting. Adam Lynn in 2009 for the Toronto Blue Jays. An unbelievable season, teaming with Aaron Hill to, to supply power in the middle of that lineup. 35 home runs, 114 RBIs. He put together a solid season as a DH outfielder. Had a look at that one, but can't come up with it. Poor Adam Lind, uh, how much did he mean to the offense? You combine the runs, 93, and RBIs, 114. That is a big package. I mean, you're talking about a young, young player, too, and he did have 110 strikeouts and only 58 walks. Here's a guy that, to me, is just going to get better when you watch his swing, how short and compact it is to generate that much power. This is a swing that, that's going to be a viable, useful swing throughout his career in the big leagues. Down on strikes there. A nice piece of pitching work. It's Hill at the plate. And two hits in the game last night, looking to add to that today and trying to contribute to his club success. First pitch on the way. Head up the middle. Oh, man, was that close. That was right back at him. Somehow he got out of the way. Now back up. And he gets in the there. No problem. Third baseman, number seven. 0 for 1 thus far. Two outs and a man on first. And Encarnacion's first look. And that one's too high. Taken for a ball as Burley tried upstairs. Well, they've got a couple hits here, and we're into the fourth inning, so they. Maybe they're starting to get something going in the second time through the lineup. Maybe they'll try to figure something out, Gary. Here's the delivery. And that swung on and hit. Rios. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. Some good work, Mark Burley. He has delivered shutout ball through four. On now last. Cito Gaston, a look on camera. He's two run deficit on his mind, I'm sure, and making plans now to try and get something across the plate for them. And Alex Rios up. Top five AL in run score. And Wells gloves that one. One away. Now we have a look at the league leaders for the best on base percentage. The table setters brought to you by State Farm. These guys really understand the nature of the game. They understand that they cannot help the pitcher retire them. They force the pitcher to throw it over the plate. They can put it in play and get a base hit, or they'll take a walk. It's going to be Przinski. 
Well, A.J. Pruszynski put together a pretty solid. Swing sends this one on the line to right center. And he gets it down. He's two for two now. That brings up Mark Tian. A.J. Pruszynski, you look at the size and you think you're going to get a lot of big power numbers from him. But that has not been the case. He's really more of an on-base percentage guy. He's an on-base guy. He works, counts, he makes pitchers work, and he and he has the ability to inside out the ball the other way. Yeah, a guy that big, you think, you know, he's going to hit four, five hundred foot home runs, but he's not. He's a, he's a singles hitter. He's an opposite field guy, too. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. It's up against the wall on a bounce. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Number 30, Mark Garcia. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. That's down. Runner could come home. And a second run is in. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Number 18, Johnny Galen. Well, two hits the last game, and you can see he was getting a little confidence as that game went on, and he's carrying it into this one with another good start. First pitch on the way to Damon. There's a bullet towards third, and he can't get to it. And this rolls all the way to the wall. That will bring up the big bat in a big moment, Alexei Ramirez. Great hitting or poor pitching. I'm not sure which. He may be running out of gas, but that's now four straight hits against him. Not looking real good. Well, you take a look at Alexi Ramirez. He's one of the more exciting players in baseball. Finally got moved to his more natural position, shortstop. And I tell you what, this is a guy that can excite you in a lot of ways. He can hit for power. He can hit for average. And he's not a big guy, but I tell you what, he can generate some power in that frame. Now swing and a shot towards second. And so Ramirez retired. And Kotze crosses the plate. Almost fell over when he got to that one. Boy, there's some upper body strength on that. Well, you have to have great body control to play this game. He certainly sewed it there. And he got him. RBI chance goes to Paul Canerco. And the offense here is putting on the show right now. They're in charge of this ball game. The runs just keep on coming right now. Quality at bat after quality at bat. A lot of outs left, but you know what? It looks to me like they're getting ready to put this one away early. And Damon crosses the plate. A perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside. Go the other way. Doing the pitching, it'll be Josh Renicki. They've decided it was time to make a change here. Gary, I tell you, I probably would have let this starter go a little bit longer. I mean, better safe than sorry, but why burn the bullpen this early in the game if you don't have to? Save him. Clobbers this ball. A soaring drive deep left center field. Over the wall. Goodbye. A two-run homer. I thought he had him set up for the slider right there, but unfortunately, he didn't. Home run. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Now the first pitch. Starts him off swinging at his shoe tops for a strike. Well, you know that taco you had before the game, Steve? I think uh, I think we've got a full hit sharply towards the hole. And again, this lineup right now on fire. So that'll bring Alex Rios to the plate. And one of the top ten averages right now. A runner on first with two outs. 
And he starts Rios out. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Throws on to first side is retired. And what a tremendous output in that inning. This lineup unable to be contained. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. And Ruiz settles in. Oh for one thus far. Number three, Randy Ruiz. First pitch. Nope, that one not in there. Burley misses. Well, offensively, they just have not been able to get anything going. Only one runner left on base, so they just need more opportunities and see if they can't capitalize on it. 1-0 pitch is a cutter. Swung on and missed. 1-1. One and one. Smash towards the middle, and that's a base hit. Ruiz on board. That'll and bring Lyle Overbay up. For the well, that's Blue the start Day. this team first needed. Base. Get that first Number guy in the inning up, get him on Lyle base, Overbay. and let's see if they can bring him around to score. And he starts Overbay out. And that one's too high, taken for a ball as Burley tried upstairs. When you throw a two-seam fastball, you want a ground ball, which means you want to throw. Swung on and ripped towards second. And that sets down Overbay. Too late, and he is safe at second. Well, you want to make sure you at least get it out in this situation, but the runner is able to advance now in the scoring position. It's McDonald at the plate. Lifetime numbers 219 off the White Sox. Now Pruszynski positions himself. Hit hard to second. Not in time. He is in there at third. Good offensive chance here. Number 13, Raul Chavez. Well, the pitcher did everything he could right here. He got the ground ball like he wanted. But you see this runner, man, once he left the box, he is flying, and he beats this one out. And he swings and hits this one foul. Burley with a delivery. Can't catch up with that swing and a miss, and it's now 0-2. Still 0 and 2. And that's another foul ball. We see that pitch running in on the hitter's hands. Great defensive swing just to put that ball in play to stay alive. Well, he finished that one off with a strikeout. Nice pitch. He pulled the string right there. Must have been looking for the fastball. Swings right through the changeup for strike three. That one's drilled to short. And Ramirez fields the ball. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. Mark Burley, that's another good inning. He's been effective, and he takes a shot. It's going to be Przinski. If you're watching the ball game last night, you saw him pick up a couple of RBIs. And the first pitch. Fouled away. And he fouls another one off. Here's the pitch. That swung on, line towards the gap in left center. And it's through into the gap. Should be extra bases. He's in there at second base, still no one away. Martin looking to knock in a run. He doubled his last time. I've driven in multiple runs in this one, Gary, and, and obviously a major part of why they're ahead. First one to T in. Here's the pitch. Hot shot towards the hole. One away now. And mark your calendars. This Friday, it's going to be Ryan Braun and the Milwaukee Brewers as the Philadelphia Phillies come to town. Action gets started, 8 Eastern. Hey, Gary, do you think John will buy us dinner in town that time we go watch that ball game? One out with a runner at second. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. That one swung on its line. Two away. That will hold the runner at second. For the Chicago White Sox. And it's Johnny Damon. Number 18, Johnny Damon. 
Two outs and a runner on second. Hard grounded a short. McDonald throws the first side is retired. So they pick up a hit but leave a man at second and fail to score. So Travis Snyder leading it off. He bounced out his last time. Number 45, Travis Snyder. And the first pitch. And this misses 1-0. Gary, okay, he's not felt any pressure out there on the mound. The defense has not felt that much pressure either. But only one runner left on base. and Hit hard on the ground to short. Fielded by Ramirez. That'll retire Snyder. Speed plays a big part in it. Let's take a look at our State Farm leaderboard in triples. Well, to get a triple, you have to think three out of the batter's box. And it's about speed, but it's also about the desire. And he clearly has that. As when he puts it in play, he's thinking extra bases right out of the box. Just missed with the fastball, 1-0. Oh. He hit 333 last year against the White Sox. A 1-0 -oh pitch. Called strike on the outside corner, and it's 1-1. I don't think he liked that call very much, but the reality is he couldn't hit that any day of the week. That's a great pitch. Here's a swing and a line drive. Beckham able to pull that one in. Well, Gary, you know, he's settling into a groove right here. And that's six in a row that he set down. It's Hill at the plate. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. And here's the first one. Here's one that's in there called strike. Oh, and one. Burley kicks oh. and delivers. You're Rings out. him up. Steve, we got three innings left to go in this ball game. He's got the shutout going. And we'll see whether or not he's got enough to go through. Well, it's a fantastic effort so far. Now it comes down. Only eight pitches thrown. That's pretty efficient. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Alexi. And one of the league's most prolific hitters in the top five. Hit sharply towards the hole. He's out at first base. Nice play on the cover. Uh, that's a well-executed play right there. Gary hustled over, got the first base, touched the bag. Thought he might have had a strike out there, but he's involved in the out anyway. And Paul Canerco to bat. Well, the thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career. Swings, clobbers it deep. Left center field. Goodbye home run. They add to the lead. Man, what a big day these guys are having. Well, they say things are contagious. Well, good hitting can be contagious. So can power. You guys are going deep. Now Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. First pitch to Quinton. Chases that first pitch. Starts off with a strike. And a big, big offensive day, Steve. Like you said, uh, they've just got the bats rolling today. Uh, tough. Going to be very tough for them to come back right now. The, the power numbers being there. I mean, uh, three innings left, but an awful lot of offense. There's a swing and a ball hit deep into right field. Still going. They add to the lead. Man, what a big day these guys are having. Comes in the box. Base is empty with one away. Here's the pitch. That's swung on and a liner here. That's going to make it in there. Right field base hit. 
So that'll bring Alex Rios to the plate. Well, you see the pitch coming to the inside part of the plate, but the hitter, a great inside-out approach, driving the ball to the opposite field. And with that kind of a cut, it may be impossible to get inside on that righty. A lucky or good, either way, that's a great approach at the plate. The 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto Blue Jays. Swing and a drive, deep left center. That one in the alley. This could be two or more. And he's going to try for it. And he gets there all the way from first. Where, uh, Rios, just a 247 batting average last year. Nobody expected that. No, not at all. And this is a guy who's a former All-Star. If you looked at him in Toronto and you thought we can build a team around him in Toronto, it just didn't work out. And on second, one away. The first pitch, hot shot towards the hole. These are the pitching staffs who have sent batters back the most often. We look at our state farm leader. Number one, the Mariners. The Red Sox second. In third, the Angels. Fourth, the Jays. And at number five on the list, the Rays. You see the, the prodigious strikeout numbers for these teams, and they have power stuff. Really, the whole depth of the team. They get a lot of swings and misses, and that's a manager's best friend. First one to tee in. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. He has to, and here's Rios heading home. And Rios comes in. Boy, what a good offensive team. Finding a way to get the runners in. Take advantage of the opportunities when you have them. That's a good offense. Katze into the batter's box. A couple of RBIs thus far. Uh, they're winning here, Gary. One of the reasons why is because he's driven in a couple runs in this one. Runner on first, two away. Line towards second, and the side's retired. Hill catches, and he'll head off. But not before they tally four times, thanks to two home runs in the inning. White Sox continue to run away with this ballgame. And it's Edwin Encarnacion at the plate. 0 for 2 thus far. Edwin Encarnacion. And Encarnacion's first look. Swings and grounds this one to the right side. Foul. Burley with a delivery. Oh. And he leaves that one alone. Edwin Encanacion showing some patience, evening the count. Now, Gary, it's tough to score when you only get three hits. We're deep into this ball game, and they have just not been able to mount any pressure against him today. So Encarnacion is set down. You can almost taste the adrenaline right now, Steve. You can just tell he's getting stronger as he goes along. Uh, he got so much confidence. He's just knocking the bats out of the batter's hands. And here's the first one. Here's a swing, a fly ball deep down the line and right. This one rolls through to the wall. Ruiz is headed to third. The throw, and he is safe at third ahead of that play. Well, I was already to mark this down on the card as a double, put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part, took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. Burley with a delivery. He's off a called strike. 0 and 1. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. And it's fouled away. Foul ball. Waste one there, one and two. This cut fastball is a very effective pitch for this guy because it allows him to set up all of his other pitches. Oh! It's fouled off. Swinging the ball, hit softly towards the hole. 
Beckham able to pull that one in. And that will not get that runner in from third. It's McDonald at the plate. 0 for 2 thus far. Here's the first pitch. It's taken for a ball. Bottom dropping out on that burly pitch. Pauses and now the 1-0. Slider just misses the black. Falls behind 2-0. Looks at one in there, two and one. And that's in there to even us at two. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. And a frustrated lineup indeed. That's now seven shutout innings. The White. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzy Gian. Uh, he has to be happy with the work on the mound, especially that last inning. Insurance run so important. And it's Johnny Damon. Lined right at the second baseman. And Hill pulls it in. And it's Alexei Ramirez now. One away. Grounded out his last time up. Here it comes. Ground ball to Overbay. And he steps on first. That's the second out. And Casey Jansen is the pitcher. He'll be relieving for the Blue Jays now. And it's Paul Canerco now. Had a home run back in the sixth. Base is empty and two down. And he starts Canerco out towards the middle. And it gets down. Hit after hit. They just keep on coming. He's got four today. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. We've got a moment to see the State Farm League leaders in slugging percentage. Oh, this is a list of hitters that strikes fear in the opposition pitching. They have to because they know with one swing of the bat, they can change the score of the game. Two outs and a man on first. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to Overbay. And he'll step on first to retire the side. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. And it'll be the Blue Jays coming right up. And it's Buck Manning. He's going to get us started. Eighth inning. John Buck. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. And Damon tracks it down. And now we've got one down here in this eighth inning of a shutout ball game. Now he's just putting on a show out there right now, Gary. Burley with a delivery. Change up just misses. 1-0. Uh, holding them scoreless so far in this one and only allowed four hits, Gary. And I think a real credit to what he's been able to do. Outstanding work between the pitcher and catcher. Just a great plan of attack. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Lines this one to the left side out of play. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. And he gets that one down. His second hit, two for four today. And that'll bring Travis Snyder to the plate. He takes this one-two pitch down in the zone. He's able to go down and get it. Get a good part of the bat on the ball and pick up the base hit. That's a tough pitch to hit. When you're behind in the count, you just want contact. And he got it. First pitch to him. Fastball swung out and missed, 0-1. I fooled him right there. That two-seam fastball has to be down in the zone to be effective, but it looked like he was looking for a different pitch. He delivers. He makes contact. Line drive. And that's into center field for a base hit. Now Toronto, here's a position to get something done. Well, he's coming off a two-hit performance Lee. in his last outing, and even though they lost, it's a good sign that he's starting to swing it. And Lynn's batting. 
Lined out last time up. Burley with a delivery. Ball! And that misses for a ball. Now he throws the breaking ball at the hitter's head, trying to catch the corner up and in, trying to get him to flinch. He didn't take the bait, didn't swing the bat. And he fouls off another one. Strike him out. Wow. And again, there's no doubt, as has been the case throughout this game, he's in charge. Now, listen, when you've got a guy pitching like this, you've got to give him the shot for the win. Here's the pitch to Hill. Ball one. Well, the starting pitcher right now is over 80 pitches, and this is a time when the manager and the pitching coach have to keep an eye and see if his velocity is dropping. If it is, you might want to think about getting him out. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios, and that gets down for a base hit. And Wells crosses the plate. Dorado's offense creating multiple opportunities. Now the shutout broken up right there, but I tell you what, no shame in the performance he's given in this one. He's been outstanding. Well, this is a guy that usually struggles with pitches in and around the knees, but he was able to just drop the bat head on it, got a good piece of wood on it, a quality big league at bat. And Encarnacion's first look. Nope, that one not in there. Burley misses. Here's the 1-0. He lets the 1-0 pitch go by. 1-1. Well, that's a pitch a lot of guys can do some damage on, but unfortunately, the pitcher gets the strike. The hitter couldn't swing the bat. Fielded by Ramirez. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. So they scratch across a run. Three hits and a couple left on. Toronto wants to get back into this one there, and they're a step closer. We catch a shot of Cito Gaston. His club's moving in the right direction offensively. Last half inning, pitching is now critical to give his guys a shot. They try and get this tied. And Beckham's in the box. To right center. And he'll take an extra base on this one. It's rolling towards the wall. He'll hold there at second base, credit him with a double. Well, just what his team needed, he continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. And Alex Rios up. Doubled home a run in his last back up the middle. Ooh, look out, off the pitcher. And Encarnacion in position. Throw is not in time, and that will be an infield single. And they won't be able to get him. Everybody's safe. We talk about a guy who's swinging it right now as good as anybody. That's his third hit of the ball game thus far. Let's see if this can mount a rally with nobody out. Chance to drive it around A.J. Pierzynski. He's looking to make it a perfect five for five here. First pitch on the way. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Well, this guy is a classic finesse pitcher with one of the best curveballs in the league. Swing and a miss. He's in the hole. Two strikes. And Steve, also, the batters have to keep in mind he'll mix the fastball in once in a while, and he can really catch him on that pitch. Well, he can, but because the fastball's not overpowering, I think you have to stay back. Let the pitch come to you, and at times, look for the curve. And they bring him home. And Mark Tiana, two for three thus far. They clearly have not figured out a way how to get this guy out. I mean, he is swinging the bat, driven in three runs already. Let's see if he can get some more. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Swung on, hit. And in there for a base hit. He's three for four today. Now will bring up Mark Kotze. Now brought to you by State Fire and the pitching staffs who are making hitters earn their way. The White Sox, number one. Blue Jays in second. Third, the Mariners, Yankees, fourth, and at number five on the list, the Rays. Well, the philosophy for both these teams is throw strikes. Do not beat yourself. Do not give base on balls. Make the opposition put it in play. 
A runner on first with two outs. On the way. First pitch and he misses the fastball. Strike one. Last year, one for three off the Blue Jays. And here's the pitch. Swing and a hot shot. And another. Wow, that hitting coach is smiling. Well, he gets a letter high pitch, a good pitch to hit, and he takes advantage of it. Nice job. Hitting from behind is not an easy thing to do in this game, but a little easier when the pitch is up there. Now you throw it over the plate like that, it's going to cost you. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0-1. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. A line drive towards short. That's caught. Side is retired. They pick up four hits. In the For those of you just joining in, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Cruck and Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. They've decided it was time to make a change here. Well, this was an outstanding performance today. I mean, that's good starting pitching right there. He won't be able to finish what he started, but he pitched a heck of a ball game. Fastball runs inside, 1-0. Well, I think right now offensively, you've got to start getting base runners. Get as many as you can. I mean, you're down a ton, so you don't need big hits. You don't need home runs. You need base runners. Slider can't find the zone. Two and one. Well, this broke a little bit too much out of the zone right here for a ball, but he's got to bring it back in. Rain that thing in a little bit. And Ramirez feels the ball in time for the up. I said, uh, you know, winning big right now. You just want to go out there, make plays, throw strikes, force them to try to put multiple hits together to get back into this game. And it's Lyle Overbay in the box now. In his career, 269 off the White Sox. 0 oh 1, Jenks kicks and deals. Not a pretty pitch, no damage. Here's the pitch, and Ramirez fields the ball, and that sets down over there. Uh, down to their final out right here, Gary. So, I mean, they're looking pretty dire at this point. And, you know, but listen, funnier things have happened. They've got to get base runners, though. And the first pitch looks at one. That's in there for a strike. Well, the pitcher goes for that hole, and most hitters swing up and in. He found that strike zone with a four seam fastball, and he couldn't get to it. Swings and hits this one. Going to be fielded by Rios. That looks like a single. So John Buck will come up. That's a really good pitch, Steve, on an 0-2 offering to keep that down and in. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. At this point, you've got to tip your hat to the batter. That's a solid job. First pitch, here it comes. Hit on the ground. This could be the end of this ball game. And on to first for out number three, and that's going to do it. White Sox win this in a lopsided victory, a dominating performance, Gary. And we get a moment to recognize the Pepsi Clutch performer. Our fantastic display by Mark Burley got it done today. You know, a lot of times pitchers get really too hard on themselves, and they're their toughest critic. But I don't think he can find too much to complain about. And Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Well, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings. But the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. And we hope you've enjoyed today's 2K sports broadcast of Major League Baseball. For Steve John and our entire 2K sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. We will see you soon.